Hey guys, welcome back with another video with Linksy. Today we are going to be looking at the campaign of Gorok. We're going to be looking at his um, start location and the first early turns. What I would recommend doing and where I would recommend you guys to go. Not necessarily the campaign you should follow, but essentially this is how I do it and I hope it will be useful for you guys. First things first, it's a little bit different from my usual spotlight slash early guide campa uh, campaign videos. Instead of putting them uh, two videos, I'm going to unite them into one and I'm going to see how this goes. It feels it's only logical to do so as it would make more sense to keep all the information in one place rather than spread it out over a number of days. That said, who is Gora? Gorok is the white lizard of Itza. He is quite unique in terms of the lizards as he is a Soros that starts with uh, Lord Croak and that means you're gonna have a relatively early start straight off the bat especially since Lord Croak's abilities do lots of lots of damage against uh, multiple number of units and your first enemies will be Skaven. Your armies are mostly gonna be based on Soros in the early game especially since you get plus three uh, recruitment for score, score veterans as a hero, you get upkeep reduction for all Soros units and you get the resilience unbreakable defense bonuses for Soros essentially uh, buffing Soros really really well then when you look at Gorok's uh, abilities and Lord effects you're gonna see the melee defense is plus 5 when in owner friendly territory and there's a physical resistance of 20 when defending sieges with the Lord's arm, very defensive uh, Lord but at the same time you need to be aggressive otherwise the scaven will overrun you you're gonna have a mixture of being hyper aggressive and then tanking up as the campaign progresses you're gonna need to try and get your relationship with Tehenuin go as high as possible because Tehenuin is a quite a strong lord early on in the campaign due to his magic and ability to have much stronger skinks then later in the campaign Tehenuin also comes in useful if you confederated him due to his uh, abilities and mounts. That said, let's just run straight into it. You start the campaign of Gorok in the southern left region of the map. You start in the region of Itza in the southern grey jungle. There are a few positives, but mostly negatives of this. The positives is you are on friendly relations with the dwarves and semi-friendly relations with the purple dinos over here, which will take a while till they get to you. The negative of this is that you are in the last year's Super Bowl and you're going to be having quite a tough time getting on through this mess. Now there are a number of ways you can get to deal with this and we're gonna try and figure that out together. The first thing you need to take care of is the uh, vermin threat that you have over here. Now to do this there are a number of ways. I'm gonna show you my way and a way to level up Gorok and level up Lord Croak. Putting Lord Croak in as replenished troops is much more important than giving uh, a Gorok any more training, as the training you're going to get is from Axolotl using it as a Sac City. Backpack the experimenter when you attack him will, in this current patch, uh, move away, and when they move away, he will go and hide in that corner. Now, instead of attacking Axolotl, you're going to attack him and you're going to auto resolve this fight. You can fight it, but auto resolving the fight gives you a number of kills which is quite relative then you're going to kill and eat the enemy to get a little bit of replenishment that said you will not move that far because you are in the control of axolotl and you will jump into axolotl auto resolve this fight again and you are again going to sack you're not going to loot or occupy or occupy or raise you're going to sack the importance of sacking the settlement means that you're going to have a sack city of sorts you're going to uh, force march your uh, hero over here and as you can see almost full replenishment instantly we're gonna get root marcher and ancient cunning because you need to kind of increase your ammo success chance as we will see later on with crow croak you're gonna get deliveries of itza one and two and i'll show, show you again why later on especially when fighting against the spam that will come from scroke scroke is going to be your primary enemy for the start and you're going to abuse the fact that you have axolotl and there is nothing uh, that lord scroke can do to come reach it you're going to also to try and drag him to come to you by defeating him multiple times Ax axolotl over there i hope i'm pronouncing not axolotl axolotl i am pronouncing that probably very wrong 
over here on this side you're gonna build the gold mining pit and you're gonna upgrade your city to turn two which regards technology you unfortunately cannot recruit anything right now but you will eventually unlock these buildings and hence unlock the technology tree what you can also do in this situation is to try and get a trade agreement with the, the dwarves it sometimes works as in this case but it's not always the case mm -hmm. getting military access will also help making sure that they do not attack you you already have a non-aggression pact with them and now with the trade agreement and military access you're making sure your back is safe and eventually getting a defensive agreement with them is good you could eventually later much later in the campaign take over their lands but they're going to be a really good a solid a spine pun not intended spine of sotek uh to your uh to your back your backbone essentially protecting you from the hyper aggressive purple dinos down here and also from the skaven up there while you're dealing with the skaven on the downside now when you look at that they're essentially the only ones you can trade with the wardens of the living pools are a recent addition you could try to get a non-aggression pact but it rarely works essentially they will join you later on but for now they are not uh, your best buds this is the first turn uh, next turn we're gonna sack axolotl again it's gonna be our sex city and hopefully we'll get gorok up to level five or six before we have lord's croak show up from the bottom as you can see we got the mace of olomac uh, unlock which requires us to raise or sack three different sec settlements belonging to the uh, following uh, race scaling and those settlements are gonna be axolotl up here uh, Subatum with when they settle it and of course we will sack their capital down there now that we've done this we will continue doing our thing we will just simply sack the settlement again you can auto resolve these fights but if you are quite new to the game I really highly recommend playing them uh, these fights when I say sacking the settlement because it will let you get used to Lord Croak's abilities and uh, magic which you're gonna need to do later on also positioning of your Soros troops you can auto resolve this easily killing another warlord and as you can see the damage is minimal to your army you're gonna sack once again and this time you're gonna run back to your region you should just about make it because you have given uh, Gorok the ability to have root marcher get ancient cunning once again and then go on lord croak and give him deliverance of pizza tree your aim is to get crater or king conduit before getting any other stuff the uh, good level up as well will be supreme shield of the old ones but i would really recommend getting great hurricane conduit early on in the campaign and then getting the eldritch powers as fast as you can you should be able to unlock these relatively easily now we need to start building up our army um, it's a good idea with uh, Gorok to start getting some Soros Warriors. They're going to be very useful to you in the campaign. Soros Warriors are very strong. You can get Soros shield, uh, Spears, but essentially since you're fighting Skaven and it's mostly infantry, you want that little bit extra melee attack and little bit extra weapon strength. Soros Spears will do very well against large unit sizes, but you're not going to be fighting those for a while. Money-wise, we are doing very good right now, and once we have this built, we'll do much better. Our aim right now is to get um, this leveled up, so we get the Soros Scar Veteran, but also, when you look at the construction, uh, there's building browser, your aim is going to be to come to Tier 4 to get the Stegodon. The Stegodon is going to be your main force, that combined with uh, building a slan a star chamber and unlocking the slans is going to be really really important why the slans you can unlock from the rights and you can do a right of awakening and this will happen after you uh, get unlocked 20 units the right of awakening is going to give you slans and is going to give you a choice between four you're almost always going to choose either slan of life or slan of fire as these two are the most powerful ones that you will use slan of fire will give you access to fire magic and slan of life will give you access to life magic the life magic is going to be very useful for you as it will allow you to have armies of stagadons that essentially never die out slan priests get a lot of magic as well as gets banishment spells uh, apart from that being slan of life gives you healing and the healing on stagadons makes your stagadons able to fight multiple times per turn giving you increased sustainability of your army i will cover the doom stack of the lizards later on in a separate video gorok himself is now f done and this is your turn too Another point to note while you're doing this, you're leveling up your lords and you're leveling up your guys, but also they keep trying to recruit units for here. 
This means that they are always investing some of their time to recruit from this side. That doesn't mean they're not recruiting down here at all, but it does mean that they are getting slightly ever so weaker. We're using this as an opportunity to get more Soros Warriors while also getting experience for our units. Next turn, we do the same thing. We are going to sack the settlement. We're going to auto resolve the fight. Of course, sack once more. And it didn't give us a level up because, of course, now we're getting higher. But as you can see, both of them are almost at level 5. We're going to stop that, come back here, and once again, we can recruit. Next turn, we'll be able to build. We're going to have enough money for that, but we're going to recruit three more of these, and that should be enough for what you're going to need to do. The skin cohorts, you can recruit more of those if you want, or normal skin cohorts, or the ones with javelins. But essentially, the source warriors are going to be the backbone that you need. On turn four, you're going to look at all your options. This time, you need to sack, uh, sorry, you need to occupy Axolotl for a number of reasons. You are getting close to maxing out the amount of units you can afford, your money is going down. It went back up because we built the relevant buildings in here, but the own, also the reason why is we've leveled up maximum canning, so we get that extra 30% ambush success chance. We also got greater arcane conduit, which means we're going to be casting a lot more of the deliverance of Itza, and hence we achieved our, our success, what we needed. Another important thing is we are now in really good relations with the Henuin, so he should accept our trade agreements and our military access uh, maybe defensive alliance not yet he will uh, by the end of this be very much liking us everyone likes that we are bullying the uh, boys down there and they accepted the trade as well they're all accepting and enjoying the fact that we're trading and working with them um, ideally we do this and sometimes if you're very lucky he will want to confederate with you later on in the campaign this uh, later on even as early as this to do so keep in mind that the more you bully the uh, Skaven down here the more he's gonna like it and enjoy the fact that you're bullying the Skaven he is at war with clan mange and clan faster and he could essentially go help him out but you do need to get rid of the Skaven down this way now at this point you're gonna have to make some decisions more often than not by this time as you can see from here there is five characters and events uh sorry five corruption from skaven and two events which means that there is an army on its way we know that this character over here is giving a number of corruption and that is fine he's giving two so the other three must be coming from someone else you need to be aware of that and you need to be careful so before we take a decision on that Keep in mind that you want to upgrade these buildings as fast as possible. I would highly recommend getting a temple of the old ones because you're going to have a lot of public order issues. But at the same time, skin foraging camp and um, skin favelas are going to be fine. If you are able to control rebellions and defeat the rebellion armies, you shouldn't go for the public order building. But if you feel you're going to have problems or you're having problems, skip building the skin filas in favor of building the public order building. If you also struggle with your army, you could add three more. And I you know, recommend doing that if you have a problem with the way it goes. But this army itself is fine. You can add three more skin cohorts if you want, and they will add a little bit more of your power. The skin cohorts will not cost a lot. They will reduce your income by 500. At this point in the campaign, it's going to cost you quite a bit more in terms of because, you know, you're spending a lot more money. But essentially, you don't need. At this point, you could end the turn. You could also, in this situation, go into the diplomacy screen once more. You could go to the cult of Sotak, initiate diplomacy. You could... To join war against Clan Mange, and you go here, military access, and they should accept. Then, if you go join war against Clan Fester, and then you go on defensive alliance, they should accept. At this point, you are very, very close of getting your confederation with Tahanowin. Tahanowin is gonna really, really like you, especially once you start fighting these guys. Keep in mind that you're gonna get attacked from a Skaven army from this side. They're gonna come and assault Itza, but they should not have that high uh, units. Essentially, since they're starting with tier three settlement, they will not have very good units. And in 
uh, Itza right now, a tier 2 settlement. You have Croxigors, you have Bastilladon, number of Skings, and some Temple Guard. You should be okay. Worst case scenario, you could recruit a Lord and you could recruit Croxigoration, Horse, Horse, Old Blood. I wouldn't really recommend a uh, Red Crested Sking, even though you have a Pompous. Pompous. Oh, sorry. Apologies for that. I have to cut that out. Um, Pompous, uh, you could recruit them. They're really, really good. Pompous gives minus four enemy leadership. If you stack them up, and you could easily stack them up, because even uh, heroes get the ability, you could essentially blow up an army without even fighting it. It's similar to the Skink stack, a uh, Stink stack, Nergus Stink stack. Let's end the turn and move on to turn five. In turn 5 what you're gonna look to do is you're gonna try and come down here and move slowly you're gonna move and in ambushes because they are gonna be coming up and you want not to be seen so you move you get yourself in an ambush and then you'll move again now we have 30% movement range left but if we move any other step we're gonna lose that that's because of the way the terrain is on this side we're still making money so we're in still good position Building the insect breeding farm is also going to help your growth in the region. I would really not recommend upgrading Axolotl at the moment because you need the population to build the Holy Ziggurat of Itza, which gives you a lot more defensibility in the region. With regards to research, you can now start researching this. It's king spawning and sore spawning. It's the only thing you can do as you build it. And after that, you just simply end your turn, and um, there's nothing more you could do. Now, at this point, uh, you're going to be encountering the enemy quite often. Our ambush was foiled, but that's absolutely fine. As long as they don't know where you are at the start of the turn, they don't generally tend to attack you. It's weird, but it does work. They will come attack you if you're very close or you're threatening them but they tend not to move in your general direction. Now, you do get the reserves of energy. Uh, you could get the magic resistance, but you're not going to be fighting magic. But the winds of magic is going to be really important, the extra winds of magic. Now we move down here again. And at this point, I'd like to have an exploration lord, but I'd rather keep Master Moon, uh, Lord Croak or I was going to call him Master Mundi in the army as it is. Exolotl is uh, and it's are fine you could also choose to opt to break the building demolish the uh, the ground lagoon and build other technology uh, but that is only if you're very confident your army is not going to die lord crow got replenishment and check again if you can get these guys to join you they are getting stronger because they're building a strong army and they have had secured various regions up there but they will eventually get uh, beaten back so you're gonna be fine it's also good that you have a defensive alliance with cult of sotek as it helps you in general in that regard and i think we could end turn as well you can build the skin burinos over there as it helps with economy your economy is in decent shape you could stop here and recruit some more soros but you should be fine at this point in time Faction of Spirit of the Jungle, that's good. Getting to meet them is a good thing as well. Nekai is always good to have in your list of allies. And it's really important, especially with the current patch, that you try and ally yourself with everyone as much as possible early on in the campaign. In this case, I would like to attack rather than defend because I always believe killing units is better, faster. We cannot trade with them, but we can ask for a non-aggression pact and eventually... We can actually ask for um, confederation as well if they get really heavily damaged. I'd see if they will join war against that. They will not, and that is fine. With regards to Cult of Sotek, they have gone really strong, so they might be interested in joining war. They are not. They are not. We're gonna come down here. Uh, we're not going to colonize at this point. Hopefully, there is a Skaven settlement. Yes, there is. And Lord Scrog isn't here. Uh, sometimes he doesn't come this way, he goes the other way and tries to surprise you. But it seems that using this method of uh, sacking the city three times, it makes him uh, come down this way. This is going to be your fight. It's going to be a tough fight. As you can see, they have a lot more troops and they do have artillery. 
but most of his troops with the exception of the melee specialist the skaven chieftains and himself those two plague monks the rest are chaff uh, clan rats which you can blow up with lord croak and with gorok you can fold him off long enough so let's jump into the fight and see how we do this is gonna be a relatively tough fight because they have artillery that can kill and melt our units now how can we deal with that we can come and fight in this corner and we will do just that our main goal is to survive this fight with minimal losses as possible we have the tools to beat it and so we shall you could always gamble and we shall gamble but most probably i will lose uh, as i expected it always happens that i lose uh, winds of magic in this scenario now for now i'm just gonna go hide back there with the exception of you you're gonna stay here and you're going to waste the ammunition of their artillery cheese for the cheese gods and that's all we're going to do it's really important you waste the ammo of their artillery as that artillery can massacre all of your soros they don't really have any other way of dealing with your soros at this point in time so keep that in mind we also have an item. Ooh, wind we have four wind blasts for free. That's really good. Okay, let's see if we can start wasting their ammunition. As you can see, he barely is hurting us with his uh, clan rats back here spawning. The reason why we want to fight is exactly this, right? We want to fight here so that they instantly route. Since they are defending a settlement, uh, they will. If they route all of the battlefield, we will win. And we kind of have terror because we uh, fought them a number of times. So whenever he fights them, they're terrified of him and they don't want to fight him. Now, they're just aligning themselves, but we're wasting as much of their ammunition as possible. They might come charging forward, but usually they just waste their ammunition and then they come charging forward. Killing that ammunition and the uh, slave, uh, Skaven slave slingers is going to be really important. They are sending some troops forward, but hopefully... It's just one unit and I'll try and dodge as long as possible. Come down this way and yeah, he's still wasting. It's 50% of the ammunition you're gonna be doing just for him. And he's not really taking any damage. He's a very strong character and generally doesn't get hurt. We're sending the plague monks at him. So I think he can beat, uh, but I'd rather not have him fight them as they are quite strong. Actually, wait, I have a better idea. What if they shoot the artillery? Yeah, perfect. They're shooting the artillery at their own plague monks. Okay, get back here. Shoot. There you go. And last shot. Okay, now we need to get him out. Come on. Get out. And then they're coming towards us. Okay. We need to get him out. This is annoying, but at least he's not getting completely bogged down. And he's running away. He's very tired, but that's fine. While he's coming this way, let's arrange ourselves in a way that we can break them without too much of a fight. They don't have the ammunition left to hurt us, so we can just stack in the corner and cause as much terror as we can to them. These plague monks and these rats are dead, and honestly, honestly that would be beautiful for Deliverance of Itza. We have 108 magic, we can do a lot of damage with the Deliverance of Itza. We're gonna try and protect Lord Croak for as long as possible and do so effectively as possible. Um, okay, get over here. Come on, come on, you got this. Okay, now they can see my troops. They'll run towards them. Come on. Give, keep his leadership up. Keep his leadership up. I'd rather not lose my lord. <laughs> Uh, you can still beat it if you lose your lord, but it's, you know, not ideal. Now they just start coming in, they start slashing in, and they're terrified. And if we beat this before the mass comes... He still has ammunition, it seems. Uh, but that's his last shot. Okay, it didn't do much damage. 
the running of the map and this is what we want that is wasted ammunition and that is fine these guys are not going to really hurt us they only have a very low weapon uh damage night runners themselves they don't have armor piercing and we have a lot of armor so we can take their fight if you want you could just blow them up but it's not ideal you want to blow up blobs like that uh, and this is at the range we can do so those are a couple a decent decent number of blobs we can blow up okay, let's use this four two one and yeah it's just okay that was okay that we'll get that magic relatively quickly they're gonna come from here there's gonna possibly be a big blob over on this side and another one on this side it always happens on the sides i have blobs and that's okay um we're gonna do the shield of itza over there giving everyone extra def defense and we're gonna wait for them to charge in uh this is actually good i'm hoping these all charge in now but and those slaves are potatoes uh come on That should be a good hit. I kind of want to get rid of these night runners. Oh, perfect. He's sending more units in. That is... That was a really good one. And they're not going to break yet, but they're not really having a good time, are they? And for now, I'm going to let him get his troops up. And I'm going to shoot this over here. Those. That's the lord of the settlement. They shoot, okay, they actually broke and ran a number of them. And those guys are running away as well. So we're not taking that much damage, but they are taking quite a bit. And they're not attacking, which is giving us the opportunity to deal with them as necessary. Now, let's see if I can get through it. These are three units. I'd rather wait for my magic to come back up. Uh, yeah, I can do this on this one. Yeah, these guys will play clock catapult and night runners are gonna break. Uh, they don't have armor, so using the level 1 is really good, because they kind of get broken relatively easily. Just getting them to get off the battlefield as soon as possible is really useful. These uh, chieftains will die relatively quickly. He's sending more troops. He still has troops back there, which are coming, but as you can see, everything is slowly but surely dying. Um, give defense, do that and they're slowly getting whittled down even their red ogres are dying and all of these guys are dying if Soros have one good thing is they can take a beating and a half uh i kind of messed i messed that one up i messed that one up you can go fight there slow it down if you're not feeling that you're managing this is a good shot there are five units over there he is at 600 kills this is why lord croak is so strong I mean, if you look at the story of Lord Croak, it's just absolutely mind-boggling. He got another couple of hundred kills there. We just need to get them off the battlefield as soon as possible, as quickly as possible. You careful not to get caught. You kind of are killing that guy. That's good. They have a lot of guys in the battlefield. Um, I need him to get more magic because this is a really strong blob that we can take out. At the same time... How much is this? This is 11. We'll wait for that one. Uh, you guys go kill that. He's running. Uh, you come here. Go up. Come here. We need 11 magic. And if we blow that, I think they will retreat. Because this is their clan rats. This is their last defense, essentially. Uh, their last amount of balance of power. We've lost a few, as you can see, but nothing that drastic. And that is it. That is the fight. As you can see, it's quite simple, straightforward, and this is how you beat uh, Lord Krog early on. He is unbreakable. He's a really... Str uh, no, wait. Our unit is unbreakable. Yeah. Uh, Lord Krog. Lord Krog himself is really strong. But as you can see, Lord Krog, 1,700... Uh, like, he did 83,000 worth of damage. And we basically won that with him and uh, Gorok. The rest were just chaff holding the line. We're gonna end the battle. It was a perfect victory, but a worthy one. We've really weakened um, the 
uh, we've really weakened the Skaven in this region. As you can see, the damage we did was just absolutely incredible. We've killed uh, two of his uh, chieftains. We've killed Lord Skrulk. So Clan Pestilence themselves are very, very weak right now, and you could end them relatively quickly in the early game. Doesn't matter if you lose the swords, you can replace these very easily. They did a lot of damage themselves, as you can see, they killed a lot. But, of course, essentially, this was based around Lord Croak. We're going to either sack, but uh, you don't need the money. You could sack, and, or you could loot and occupy. In this case, um, you know what, let's just sack. And we'll occupy next turn. Because the money might be useful in terms of getting uh, Schlangenhupak up here to confederate with us. Uh, they don't like us that much right now. They like us, they just need to lose a battle. And then you should theoretically be able to confederate them. I've managed it once. Uh, that's all I've managed. Now, you are going to give him either Bonded Service or uh, Fervorant. I kind of like this one as it gives you the opportunity to reduce, start reducing the uh, corruption in the region. You are aiming for a lightning strike and eventually you will give him um, the, you'll go down his tree down up here of unrelenting assault. In the meanwhile, you can fill anything else. You can't really go wrong with Gorok. With regards to building, you're not gonna upgrade that. At this point, you could start upgrading the sacred spawning caverns, but that is up to you. Um, if you want to take Oxalatl before turn 10, you don't sack the settlement, but that extra gold is going to be really useful in overall, especially to build this, which will give you access to the shielded versions, which have a little bit extra uh, resistance towards missiles, as you saw from that fight. And this is the point where you can also get the right of re re resilience, which gives you extra 10 melee defense, make them unbreakable, and gives them extra charge defense. Uh, which is useful, not in this, this scenario. That is how you turn end your turn 7. And at this point, as you can see, you are in a very, very good position. He's starting to re-recruit an army over here. And this is really important, because if they're re-recruiting an army over there, you can control where they are recruiting. Because you can see everyone is now declaring war on them, because they are so weak and so, uh, you know, beaten up. That doesn't mean they're not recruiting. Uh, use magic. E weapon strength. No, because you kind of want to use his magic. That doesn't mean that they're not still strong. They still have an army that they're recruiting somewhere else. But he hates us like crazy. And that means the others love us. As you can see, they all have a big smiley green face next to their face. Diplomacy has become incredibly important in the current patch. You're going to outer resolve this fight. You're going to control by killing Trab over there. Giving yourself a little bit more experience. And this is where you occupy the settlement. You can then... Con continue to build the grazing pastures which are going to help you recover more troops but also growth growth is essentially one of the most important things that you have now at this point you could get the shield of safari which gives you damage resistance every time you cast a spell and that will go on with the, uh, the supreme old one's shield but essentially now you kind of want to upgrade this to reduce the cooldown to be able to cast that non-stop Gorok himself is much stronger as well, and we are one turn away from Lightning Strike. Now, what I am hoping for is, and this again, it's not always, but when it happens, it's really uh, useful, is they have an army outside Oxalatl. So when you defeat Oxalatl, you defeat it in a fight outside. As well as this, it's time to recruit four Soros uh, veterans, at, uh, sorry, Soros warriors, as they are going to be really useful in the upcoming fight. And the upcoming fight is going to take uh, place in two turns. You're going to have a, a full 20 stack. You could build and upgrade other buildings, but you're three turns away from upgrading Itza to Holy Cigarette, so I would refrain from doing so. This is also an opportunity where you could get one of the um, build it, uh, w one of the region uh, bonuses since you've completed the region. I always go for alignment of crafting. gives you more income, more growth, and public order. And you're going to need that public order because you're going to get a rebellion next turn. That rebellion is going to be useful for two reasons. One, dwarves might come down and finish it off for you. Or the other option and gives you relation with them. Or you're going to have the Chakwa come down, but they will not attack you because you have a rebellion. And they'll just sit there and wait. So that is always useful. And that don't worry too much about it. It should be a basic rebellion. It might not even be a Skaven rebellion. And you should be able to deal with it with relative ease. With that said, this is turn 8. Um, I'm hoping this uh, style, uh, I'm taking this opportunity to speak to you guys 
um, if the style of guide is easier and better than the previous style which was a bit more um, bang 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 this is a little bit more in depth a little bit more full of flavor and detail than the previous uh, guides that I had now we have completed this settlement uh, this ability as well and we got the uh, great white lizard uh, uh, thingy uh, sorry great white lizard. I'm just reading here uh, my brain is a little bit farty shut up okay um, essentially you get a lot of extra resources and gold he is now kind of losing a bit of his power and that means that you can start trying to bribe him and confederating him. Confederating him means that you're going to get a lot of public order issues, but also you're going to get um, a really strong region over there, which gives you a very good foothold to start attacking vampires. Now, you can go and take um, Oxalotl, but now you're going to move in here and you're going to use him as a scout. Now, move him only 50%. He has Matterstorm outside of the settlement and you're going to do what you do best and fight now um one second because this should you should be able to go and attack that apparently you can't apparently you can't what the hell happened you should have had enough movement range to do so all right not a problem we'll recruit four of these guys and we will stay there at the edge and attack next turn that bug movement thing that happens is annoying as hell <laughs> it happens it should you should have been able to attack and capture oxalatl this turn but it seems it's not the case um and now you have a number of other things available i would go with tablet of the Saurus, and it's going to be really important to build it and next turn you will be able to have right of awakening and get your first slam mage they shouldn't have that much recruitment it will be mostly basic units but yeah you can still attack him it's just going to be a little bit more difficult to do so it's it's all fault of lord croak's fat arse that we couldn't do so everyone is declaring war on them which means the more you beat them up the more people are gonna like you and oxalatl is possibly only a tier 3 settlement but it's going to be fine now uh we got a mi mission um i believe this is the wait yeah, you get a Blast Stegodon. This is fantastic. Kill 500 enemies in battle. Getting the Blast Stegodon is really, really amazing. Okay, so you go back in there, replenish troops. You should have only 20 units. We own 20 units. We have 20 units in here. And we should come and attack this guy. They didn't even have the chieftains inside the army. Oh, he retreated because we we're too strong for him. But we're not allowed to retreat from here. This is a relatively easy army to fight. Um, dang it! Usually he doesn't run away. Ah, maybe we got too strong. Um, we'll just do that and fight this. This should be an easy fight. Um, as always, the Skaven have their uh, settlement type and you're going to use uh, Lord Croak to cheese it down. So, continue siege. If he comes and attack you, if they come sally out against you, that will be fine. And, and, turn. Oh, yep, yep. Uh, that's, that's good for us, gives us more experience. And Oxalatl should be ours. Now I'd recommend sucking it a turn or two. It 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 should uh, should help. Right of awakening, cult of Sotak, and we should have also the right of awakening awake. We can get a blast stegodon. That is really really important. Now uh, that's fine. The blast stegodon will recruit after the fight. This should be a straightforward fight and will be the last fight of our uh, tutorial or guide this settlement is the easiest settlement to siege and most people make the mistake of attacking this corner the trick is much simpler than that you should always always attack this corner now as far as i know they should not have um war bomb as of yet so doing this is absolutely fine but when they have war bomb do not put your units like this because it hurts 
All right, we put Gorok and Norcrog here, and then we will just stretch our units up that way. So we don't get war bombed um, to oblivion. Um, we're just going to run all the way up, and we're going to do as much as damage as possible with Lord Croak, and then uh, we're just going to finish them off with our uh, infantry. Our infantry should beat everything they have. The only strong thing they have at the moment, strong being the operative word, is that they have slightly better troops than us. Uh, in that, sorry, slightly better defenses than us. So we... We start blowing up this stuff, and slowly but surely we'll blow up everything. 46 kills. The deliverance of its level 1 is not that strong, but it can do a lot of damage. Let's do this, since they're all passing from here. It's 100 kills. That should be another 100 or so kills. Yep. Yeah, they're just summoning them in there. They're not war bo war bombing our forces. Because hey, you could check if there is a war bomb. I didn't check, and that's a mistake from my end. But such is the case. Now, what you could also do is the following, which is a little cheeky and a little cheesy. But you break in with Gorog. They don't have anything that I can see that can kill him really fast. In here. Uh, I think I only saw clan rats, and clan rats aren't that really hard to kill. Gorak can go in here, break the gate, and then they start beating up on him. And when they come collapse on him, you use your abilities as Lord Crow. You already got 342 kills, that's a, a lot of Skaven. They're sending more Skaven. He has some Plague Monks and Cerberus, but they're, they're, they'll get beaten up really quickly. Breaking the gates and seeing if there is an opportunity over here to cast the ability such as uh, this one seems like there's one forming Come on break the gates Lord Croak is gonna be the crux of your army at the early mid campaign and uh, even late game campaign is gonna be really useful except late campaign You're gonna have problems because you're gonna be dealing with elite units. So you're gonna have to use the higher level magic which is a little bit more expensive and it's going to you know cost you a little bit more in terms of that but at that point you should have okay this is something we want to blow up as soon as possible because they have a lot of damage so when they settle down we'll blow them up that is worth that 11 magic unless they run off but they yeah that's that that was worth it uh, 100% worth it because those guys are really, really strong. Gate is slowly going down. Gorok doesn't die, but he is essentially uh, unkillable. That's his good thing. Starting off with a lot of armor. All right, I'm going to cut the video till the point that I break into the uh, gate, and then I'm going to show you how to kill this um, initial blob. After that, all of this should be quite easy to achieve. Just charge in your horde, and you should be able to overpower everything he has. So we've broken through and we're just waiting for them to collapse all on top of him. They should do so as they're currently trying to figure out what to do. The eye just sends them around. Once they do that, once there are two or three just fighting him, just blow them up as best as you can with whatever you have. Uh, at the moment they're just kind of collapsing on him. I'm using the abilities that he has to kind of try and get it, more of them in joining in him. And now this is a good opportunity to use this one. Uh, that's at least two or three of them. And that's at least 400 of them uh, in one blast. Come on. Ah, it wasn't 400, but it was close. I mean, close. He got 500, uh, 130 kills from that. Gorok himself should be doing fine and getting these guys collapsing on him. They did change how the AI works, so getting a lot of them onto him is much harder now than it used to be. Um, but still, pretty much the same concept works. Um, you could do this again, but it seems it's not working. Uh, let's actually do this. There are four of them in there, and they should... Yeah, that that's a lot of damage. 
150. He's recovering a little bit of magic and let him get back to maximum magic and then be able to cast a spell up here because uh 41 okay I'll just do that because they're do they're the ones that are doing damage to him and they're the sensor bears as well okay. and at this point we've done quite a bit of damage to the enemy and we should just start going in Why were you? Wait, what? Oh my god, I left you. <laughs> I forgot the skinks. That's alright. Skinks' lives matter, I guess. <laughs> oh, poor skinks. See, as you can see, Gorok is taking a lot of punishment and he's absolutely fine. Um, they're sending more troops, but we've killed most of the army uh, there very easily. And we're just sending more troops in now. It's a question of they're, if they're able to hold on our invasion or not. And most probably they are not going to be able to. Uh, just do this and you keep fighting up here. We will be able to get to level 30 again. But then after that, that's going to be all of our winds of magic. These guys should be more than able to get in and start dealing the damage necessary. Uh, he is using magic. But again, it's not going to really affect us that much. They're going to send a lot more troops. But again, at this point, it's not much that they can do. If he uses magic here, it will be painful, but it's really nothing much uh, considering our quality of our troops. The Saurus are much, much stronger than uh, clan rats at the start of the campaign. And this is why you kind of want to get rid of the Skaven earlier, earliest possible, as then they become rather a force to, to, to deal with. Okay, you kill him. Um, you go there, you go there. And you guys fight that. Uh, you keep getting magic, even though this is a really, really good uh, slot. We're going to take damage, of course, but it's not going to be that bad. You go deal with him. You go deal with him. Ah, uh, what the hell. Break them. Yeah, that was 200 units. Just jump in. You kill them. Okay, you got up here. Go kill him. That's the last magic I can cast, but it's hopefully worth it! Uh, we didn't hit both of them, but that's fine. We're beating them up here, we're beating them down here. We've essentially got inside the settlement. We're taking damage, but again, it's all for a worthy cause, and we will recover this relatively easily. Like, with the exception of these uh, skinks, which I, uh, like, I am going to disband. Every single time, uh, we're doing fine. Uh, you calm down. Okay, you're fine. Their chieftain is getting damaged. Their uh, boy over there is getting damaged. You go attack there. Um, and then we're going to just get into their center and capture their center. You guys all go up there and you guys deal with their lords. Yeah, that's perfect. Keep forgetting to cast that spell. Uh, it's important to cast Supreme Sh uh, Shields of the Old One as much as possible. Just come up here and just charge into there. It's not worth coming around this side. It takes a bit too long. Uh, kill him, even though I kind of wish you guys killed him instead, but that's fine. He's actually taking a lot of damage. Uh, they're running down this way and you guys go in there. They shouldn't have that much left. And he doesn't have any more magic. I'm rushing this. I usually take a lot longer to do this uh, than I am right now. Okay, you guys go kill that.
This is a lot of magic. Um, kill him. Okay, there I broke it. That's it. GG. We've taken Oxalato. Ah, uh, this will be much easier now that you will get the uh, that you will get the uh, blessed Saurian. Uh, sorry, blessed Tegadon, which is a really really strong unit to have early game. Now you have two options here. I think we have the movement range to sack and occupy. Uh, or just occupy. I really recommend second occupy because then he's just sort of deal with all the scaven problems you have And you should be getting quite a little bit of money from this uh, Not to actually loot and occupy is fine. This wasn't enough money There are more scaven you can kill in the area and it's not worth getting it down to level one now You have essentially finished clan pestilence. You've killed the clan That will cause you the most trouble and you've secured yourself a back against the wall now there is a rebellion going on up here, which seems to be quite strong. Um, usually it's much weaker than that, but you will have time to get up there to deal with it. They have come down all this way to deal with you, and that is fine. You are in good terms with Tahanuin. You can ask for a military alliance, and you probably could bribe him a military alliance at this point. Uh, payments, and that would be quite useful. Ah, uh, you could, you could essentially do so. He is going to really like you. You are becoming a great power. Now, what are the next steps from here? Well, the next steps is secure marks of the old one. That is an army in there. Uh, there's an enemy. You're going to lose Axolotl up here, and that's fine. You're going to suck and beat up the living bejesus out of Clan Fester. And you're going to get stronger. You didn't really lose that much down here. You are with lightning strikes, so you're going to be able to deal with most problems. Keep in mind that you need to move slowly and you need to move uh, carefully because of the rebellions that will occur. You're going to disband your skinks. Uh, as much as we love skinks, uh, we are going to really want this black stegadon. Uh, that thing is going to really do a lot of damage. And if you really want to go crazy, you have enough money to recruit a right of primeval glory and that is going to put you up there in terms of power right now you're considered to be the sixth one most powerful um, you're stronger than most of the people in this region if you look for what you're surrounded by apparently Lokir is rank nine but if you recruit a um, uh, right of primeval glory you're going to be absolutely fine in everything but the money because the money is going to cost you a lot a stegodon costs you 400 so let's say you have five or six of them uh, and a couple of carnosaurs and a couple of bastilodons you're gonna be really really suffering in terms of money i hope this guide was useful it's rather lengthy as a guide but we've taken oxalato on turn 11. you could do it on turn 10 uh there was the movement bug because i put uh, lord croak out and it, it worked before but then of course when it comes to recording it does not work ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please i you know i appreciate if you like the video or tell me what you liked and what you think could have been better it's always nice to hear from you guys with regards to uh, content i'm going to be asking you about your opinion more in terms of what you'd like to see i'm going to be doing so in the community post so feel free to comment there and reach me there you can also reach me through discord i'm always looking forward to suggestions on what you'd like to see as it makes my job easier understanding what you want and if you're new to the channel do consider subscribing it helps me it helps me to produce more content and grow and it kind of just gives me that little kick of endorphins in the morning in these days talking about these days stay safe out there it's a crazy world still uh, hopefully it will be a better year but uh, it's gonna take a lot of work with that said ladies and gentlemen have a lovely day i'll see you tomorrow stay safe and goodbye